Hey, how's it going, fight fans? Welcome to Mindful Combat. If you're new to the channel, my name is Rohan, and as you know, as MMA fight fans, there's not been much going on in the world of MMA this week, so that's why you'll notice that there hasn't been no breakdowns, and there's been no breakdowns for me to do, which is my favourite thing to do on my channel. And with the quiet week, that means it's quiet for growth. But still, for you guys, I wanted to get some content out there, so the, ch the channel's not quiet for a full week. Um, I don't want to be one of those people that only does one video per week, so here we go. What I've done is I've gone back to some of my as-requested videos and picked out a comment that I thought would be great for me to make a video on. So it just goes to show, just because your um, comment doesn't get selected for my as-requested video on a Monday, doesn't mean I'm not going to do a video on it. And um, actually, the guy who this suggestion comes from, it comes from Tony Picks MMA, who has, actually has a channel of his own. And, I'm, I'm, I'm holding steady that this is not a um, as requested video, but uh, I will give this channel a shout out to so Tony Picks MMA. Check him out. Great video right there. And it's one that I was really, um, really looking forward to getting into and it's one that I've really enjoyed putting together. So his is, who do I think are the best fighters to never have fought in the UFC? And that's an interesting question. And it's especially interesting because as the uh, world of MMA has grown, it's almost become like a... Um, it's almost become like a uh, definitive standard that you, if you're any good, you fought in the UFC. If you never fought in the UFC, you were never any good. And because of the sport, the way it's blown out, it's, um, the casual appeals being there with the UFC. A lot of people even call um, MMA just UFC. They don't know that's MMA. And they don't know that there's a whole sport that exists outside of the UFC product. And this is a video that gets you thinking a little bit because these are some names that could have very well done very well in the UFC. And in my opinion, would have been champion in the UFC with some of these guys. Anyway way and um it's really good so before i get into the uh, proper official list a couple of shout outs like uh, honorable mentions if you will so someone like paulo filo who was once uh, in the wec banner so almost ufc and um, he was 16 and wec world champion before he lost his belt when it was taken from him when he failed to make weight in his rematch with chel sonnen he went on to lose that fight um, he was once one of the most talented fighters in the world and he was thought of very highly and he was a guy who never could make it to the ufc then we got um, Ivo Bob Chinchin, who's, who's a guy who I was a huge fan of. He's done a lot of great things in the world of MMA, and I was a huge fan of his as well. And that's just just some names, of course. Um, when I could, the list could go on and on and on and on, but I'm going to give you my top four anyway. And um, of course, this is all subjective. It's my opinion pieces. I'm not saying none of this is factual. I'd be interested to know who your top four is as well. So comment below with your top four and let me know what you think of mine that I'm about to give you now. So at number four, I've got Bibiano Fernandez. Bibiano Fernandez, who's currently 39 years old, is actually still a world champion in one championship. He won the belt um, in his uh, trilogy fight with uh, Kevin Perenion when he actually got the belt given to him by um, disqualification in a fight, which I felt like um, was a bad call in that fight. So I'm glad they're going to run it back for a fourth time. I have no issue with four fights in um, uh, between guys in MMA. I think if it's necessary, it should happen. And um, that's the way it is. So some background information on Bibiano Fernandez. Bibiano Fernandez's record stands at 23 wins and 4 losses. He's a two-time uh, one championship bantamweight world champion. He had seven defences off his belt in his first title run. He won the 2009 Dream Featherweight Grand Prix and he won the 2011 Dream Bantamweight Grand Prix. He was actually signed to come, uh, he was actually in talks to sign to come to the UFC after winning the Bantamweight Grand Prix when his record stood at 11 and 3 at the time, but he decided against it, signed with one championship and had a nice long career in one championship. With wins over the likes of Masakazu and Minari, if you don't know him, he's the, almost a godfather at Hillhooks. We've got Joel Warren, the baddest man alive, who went on to do uh, um, some great stuff in uh, Bellator. We've got uh, Joaquin Hanson, old school guy. Those of you who know, you know. And um, obviously he's beating Kevin Belenion in his first fight as well. I won't really say he's got two wins over him because it's qualification. What I felt like was a bit of a cop-out. And the quadrilogy should, should settle things. But So yeah, so for number four, I've got Bibiano Fernandez, a great part, a great all-round fighter between February and Bantamweight. He's done some great things. I believe he's um, he would have done some great things in the UFC. And it's a shame that we never got to see him in the UFC. I get some of the best in the world. And number three, we've got one of my personal favourites of all time in Shinya Aoki. Shinya Aoki, who's still only currently 36 years old. And I say only uh, because uh, 36 relative to how long he's been around, the amount of fights he's had is actually not not that that old. But anyways, Shinya Aoki has a mixed martial arts record of 43 wins and 9 losses. That's an incredible win. He is vastly more experienced than most fighters you will see fighting in the UFC. Of those 43 wins, 28 of those wins come by submission. And that's exactly who Shinya Aoki is. He is a submission guru. He's a wizard. He will wrap you up, choke you out, submit you, grab a limb, 
you'll be in trouble when you're fighting Shinya Aoki. Shinya Aoki is a bad, bad dude, and he does some great things in his career. And just to highlight some of his um, key accomplishments, he won a Shooto Championship, of which he had uh, one title defense. He won the World uh, Wama uh, World Lightweight title, which was the World Alliance of Mixed Martial Arts. And there was actually a pretty big thing in 2009. They were trying to grow out pretty big. It was supported by like the likes of Donald Trump and Oscar De La Hoya. Obviously, Affliction had uh, Wama Championship fights on their banner. So... So that's something to remember. So that's that's um, significant. And um, he won the Dream Lightweight Championship. He had two title defenses. And he's actually been a two-time one world champion. So he's had multiple world titles in mul multiple organizations, won tournaments, and has been around for a long time. His resume is an impressive one. Bloody incredible when you think about some of the wins he's got. He's beaten the likes of Edward Foley-Yang, who also beat him. So that was impressive that he was able to get that. Revenge, he beat Kamal Shalorus, who's a former WEC main event of the UFC. He, he, he was a respected commodity. Antonio McKee, who was once um, a, a long-time MFC champion on a long win streak, a really respected fighter. Lao Beerbomb, who in the early days, well, in the sort of mid-days of Strike Force, was a, a name that they were trying to get out there. He's a real-known guy. Um, he's also been the likes of Tatsuwa Kawajeri. We all know him. If you don't know him, you're not a hardcore like, like us guys here, but... You should check him out if you don't know who he is. Joaquin Hansen, mentioned him before. Carl Uno, old school G from the early days of UFC. And Jay-Z Cavalcante, who at one time was thought to be the best um, lightweight in the entire world. So he's got an incredible resume. Never fought in the UFC. And I would love to have seen my prime Shinya Aoki versus a Habib Namagomedov. No doubt Habib was going to go for a takedown. No doubt he was going to be comfortable off his back. And I would really have loved to see how Habib would have dealt with something like his rubber guard or... You know the crazy stuff that Shinya does in, in in submission grappling. So so yeah, I, I feel like that's that's really a a, a sad loss for the world of uh, mixed martial arts because him and Habib could theoretically have fought each other. Because if you think about it, uh, let's say four years ago when Habib was coming up, uh, he would still have only been 32, 31 years old. They could have collided. That would have been a great fight. And and and, and it's kind of sad. It's kind of why I I um, actually kind of support the Ali act in the world of mixed martial arts. I think it will be good, but. It, it does bring with it its, its own problems. It's not, it's not without a fault in the world of boxing. It's definitely suffered those faults. But anyways, I'm digressing. As we move on to number two, is a guy who was actually on another one of my list, and it's my list for most overrated fighters in the world right now. Um, my, and that's Michael Chandler. Now, let me be clear here on my stance with Michael Chandler. I believe that Michael Chandler in his day was an incredibly talented, well-rounded, durable fighter who had um, a wealth of potential and talent to do a lot of great things in the world of mixed martial arts. And he did a lot of great things in mixed martial arts and um and so he deserves his place on the uh, on the list however as it stands in this day and age at 33 years old now 33 is not that old but i feel like his skills have declined that's why i had him on my most overrated list he's not necessarily an overrated fighter as it stands in this day and age um uh, uh, overall in his career sorry but in his in this day and age i don't feel like he's um worth the position he gets anyway i'm digressing again i, I do that a lot uh, michael chandler he's the man He's one of the best lightweights, in my opinion, to have never fought in the UFC. Probably the best is up there with Shinya Aoki, uh, who also never fought in the UFC. And I'm, I'm a huge Mike Chandler fan. Just to give some stats on Mike Chandler, who has a 19-5 and five, uh, mixed martial arts record. He won the Bellator Lightweight Grand Prix. And he's a three-time Bellator World Lightweight Champion. He's got wins over the likes of Marcin Held, who, you know, he's a talented, well-rounded fighter. Patricky Pitbull Ferrere, two times, who's on a five-fight win streak and is a contender in Bellator right now. He beat the likes of Rick Horn, who's a really respected, talented, tough dude uh, in the early days of Bellator. He former UFC lightweight world champion, a former WEC lightweight world champion in Benson Henderson. And he also took out Eddie Alvarez in their first fight. And then, in my opinion, should have gotten the win in the second fight. Eddie Alvarez then went on to win a UFC world title. Where does that put him? Interesting, right? Um, also, they had one of the best two fights I've ever seen in my entire life of watching MMA. So if you ain't seen them fights... I'm guessing you guys have. Go check them out. <laughs> Anyways, as we move on to my number one, there's really no surprise here. And anyone but this name at number one, really, I would ha lose all credibility on my channel, I suppose. But number one is Fedor Emelianenko, the currently 42-year-old um, legendary Russian. One of my favourite fighters of all time. He was just a man in his early days when he was coming up. Absolutely incredible, and as it stands, even with his decline and catching all the losses later on in his career, he's still got a pretty exceptional mixed martial arts record, standing at 38 wins and 6 losses. So when you consider that in comparison to the likes of, uh, I don't know, Nate Diaz, for example, who's got 20 wins and 11 losses, or Anthony Pettis, who's got, uh, you know, 20, 
won 22 wins with uh, eight losses, nine losses, 22 wins and nine losses now. So, so you know, there, there's um, there's some respect to be given to a record of like Fedor's, who's caught a lot of losses at the end of his career. So that's how good Fedor was. Just to go through some of his accolades now, uh, he won the Rings 2001 Absolute uh, uh, World Championship. He was the Pride Heavyweight World Champion and he had three title defenses equal with Stipe. And that was at a time when Pride had a superior heavyweight division. So that was a pretty damn impressive run that he went on there. He won the World Alliance of Mixed Martial Arts Heavyweight Championship, which I alluded to earlier. And he defended it not once, but twice. And for all those UFC fanboys and shills out there that like to say that Fedor never fought the stiffest competition, well, let me list some names to you. He beat the likes of, in his run, Ricardo Arona, Renato Barbaduso Rowe, Semi Shill, the greatest kickboxer of all time. He beat Heath Herring. He beat Antonio Rodrigo Noguero, not once but twice. And this is when Antonio Rodrigo Noguero was, was literally the man at heavyweight. You know what I mean? He was the guy. So Fedor came and beat him, not once but twice. What does that tell you about how good Fedor was? And after that, Noguero went on to win a um, UFC interim title by choking out Tim Silver. And Tim Silver, don't look at it through today's vision. Look at it at the time. He was a top five, top two heavyweight in the world. So, yeah. He beat Mark Coleman not once but twice. He beat Mur uh, Mirko Krokop, in my opinion, the greatest heavyweight fighter of all time. What a great fight that was. And that was when Mirko Krokop was putting everybody out, unconscious, separating them from their consciousness. That was such a great fight between him and Mirko Krokop. And that was, that was honestly such a great one. He also beat the likes of uh, Mark Hunt, Tim Sylvia, like I said, when he was about. Andre Arlovsky, when Andre Arlovsky was on a five-fight win streak, uh, two, one fight removed from um, fighting for a UFC heavyweight world title. He left the UFC. Went on a, well, he actually won a couple of fights in the UFC, then left the UFC. He won a couple of fights in Affliction. Fought Fedor, got KO'd in the first round in a great fight. And then more recently, he's beaten the likes of Frank Mir and Chelsea. So there's no question who number one is on the list, Fedor Emelianenko. If I was to do a video on how great Fedor was, I could be doing the video for literally 20 minutes. I could talk about how great Fedor was, but I'm trying. I'm going to try not to do that. I'm going to try not to do that because you know what? That would be really boring for you guys. So guys, who is your top four list? Thank you to Tony Picks MMA for giving me an incredible shout out. Um, incredible shout out, incredible video idea. You the man, You've got a great channel as well, so yeah. And um, so who's your top four list, guys? Why don't you comment below? Let me know who's your top four favourite fighters to have never fought in the UFC. Video ideas, comment below as always. I'm happy to take them on. And um, thank you for watching, guys. Oh, by the way, probably wonder, Rohan, why are you not in your cubicle? What's going on? I'm so busy at work right now. I haven't had the chance to sit down. So I come home at my table, do everything I've got to do, and I sit down and record my video. Cheesy with a mug here, I know. And um, <laughs> but I'll be back in my cubicle soon. And um, actually, my next video that you'll see, I'll probably be back in my cubicle. So thank you for watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like, share, all that jazz. Thank you for watching. Mindful Combat.